Welcome back everyone to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Today we're going to learn how to populate a combo box, list box or radio group, they all work the same, by using data from our database. This is quite useful so that when we get input from the user, we know that they are selecting a valid value for input. We're going to do this in Form 1 Activate, but you can also put this in a procedure and just call it in Form 1 Activate or wherever you need it. We will have an object like the combo box on the form added already. Um, you can also write code to create it dynamically for those who know how to do that. But then we will first run a SQL statement. So this one is showing, remember we did distinct in the previous example so we're showing one of each grade from the table and this table is called usernames in the database then i need to go to the first record so dot first makes my active record the first one in my table then i'm going to use a while loop to loop through this query until i've reached the end of file marker that really means that I am looping until I hit the end of this table of whatever is open in my query at the moment. So my while loop is saying, while I have not reached the end of this query, continue to execute the code inside the begin and end. This is an example of a list box. Um, and I'm going to remember we have items in our list boxes and radio groups and combo boxes and I'm going to add so list box dot items dot add I'm going to add to this list box certain values in the round brackets I'm going to put now the name of the query square brackets and the the field name of the values that I'd like to add to this list box very important that before the end of your while loop is that you have a QueryBooks.next. You need to move the cursor or the active record to the next record or you'll be stuck in an infinite loop. You have moved your active record to be the first record and if I say well not end of table and I am not moving to the next records I'm stuck at the first one and I will never reach the end of this table. I'm just reminding you of how to get input from a combo box, list box or radio group that you did in grade 10. Remember, please study this line of code here. We want to store the input from what the user selected and the wording that we see on these objects are called the items and in the square brackets we indicate which one of the ones that the user click on and that is stored in the item index of this object remember that we can't just use item index but that we have to repeat the name of the object you can now go back to the festival program and try to get the output for your combo box as on the right and write the code in form on activate under the select menu, menu, the company ID menu, I want you to try and use this combo box now that you populated in Form on Activate to produce the following output. Press pause, I'm going to show you the memo to the Form on Activate question. Here is Form on Activate. I first need to display all the fields from TBL company. I want to add company ID. Now you'll see in TBL company, company ID only appears once. So I don't need to use distinct. However, if you use TBL activity, company ID did appear in there more, more than once and you would have to use select distinct company ID from TBL activity. And I'm starting at my first record. I'm looping while I've not reached the end of this table. And I'm adding to my combo box, I'm adding every value from the field company ID. Remember to move your active record to the next record. Here's the end of my while loop. And I've just added here a user-friendly message to the combo box's text property. 
so that the user know what they need to do. You will find some more activities to practice with in my books, but here is what we've learned up to now. We have order by that sorts. Uh, we have to take note of the field's data types. If the field, when we're using a where, if our field is a text data type, we need quotes around the values, date time need hashes, and the rest need nothing. We need our square brackets for reserved words or fields with uh, spaces in them, or maybe if they contain some form of operator. Then we can use between. Remember, with between, both sides of the AND will be included. With text fields, though, the second value will be excluded. Then we had is null and is not null. We can use AND, OR, and NOT, or even NOT equal to. We also use the IN operator. Remember the round brackets and that it can be applied to any data type. And our SQL state is not case sensitive. Um, if you produce an empty table, it probably means that your value is incorrect. So let's say I was lo looking for John. Maybe there was no John in your table. Then we can use user input and for user input we'll use quoted string with a variable in the round brackets. For boolean data types we can use bool to string and for date data types date to string. And then we had record count. Remember, you have to run a SQL statement first and it will hold the number of active records. And finally, we learned about like. And like will find partial values for me using the percentage sign or the underscore. Distinct finds me only one of each value. And then we populated the items using our query that we run and then a dot first and while not end of query begin and end and remember your dot next. Next we're going to do some calculations in our SQL statement. So I hope to see you soon.